can sum the whole entire report in one only message. Unprecedented, far-reaching, rapid transformation of the entire society. It is not a poor country, it is not a wealthy country, it is not we need a fundamental transformation starting with our behavior, our technology, our governance system, our institution. Um, today I think it is now generally accepted that we as humans are responsible for the problem of global warming. This year, 2019, may very well be one of the top five years in terms of warmest years ever recorded. But the last five years have indeed been the, the warmest ever measured. Um, we are now in the vicinity of one degree Celsius of global warming complete, compared to the pre-industrial value. Unfortunately, despite the need for improved adaptation, we're not seeing as much spend in this area as we need to by our governments. Again, that need to ensure that climate change is a key part of our sustainable development path, that we use that adaptation to particularly protect the very poor in our urban areas. Um, but the problem is with governments having very limited resources available to them, where do they spend it? Do they build houses? or do they spend it on adaptation? And can we find ways of combining that spend to get both, to get development and adaptation? As policy makers, when you come up with policy, the next stage is your in the implementation of the policies that you are coming up with. The people who are actually gonna make this happen are the politicians, sometimes, most of the times in Africa, yet they don't get to understand what we bring out. My question has to do with students. Because if I hadn't come for this summit, I wouldn't have seen the impact on, um, of climate change on this particular global world we are living in. My counterparts in other schools don't have the insight into how climate change is actually affecting us. And so I want to know of how you are helping with the students who don't really have much interest in these issues. As we are the future leaders and need to get more information on these problems that we'll have to face later in life. How are you helping us to identify these problems? How are you advertising these problems to we the students such that we might develop more interest and know more about these vital problems? Thank you. The, 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 the kind of partnership that we envisage, the IPCC and then the Union of Triple C interrelationship is a classic example. And I'll end with that. Why? We live in a country where, where the researchers invest their time into re to research into is not like, is not determined by by the needs of the government of the day. Because largely funding of research is driven by the donors. So is it many of them is such that they will determine where you put, you will spend your time to research. We're not taking climate, science, um, climate change um, as a serious matter. We're not, we're not, we're, we're not um, um, serious about climate change. And I think, it, again, this comes back to communications. How do we communicate the science of climate change? And I was talking to Francois earlier on during lunch, I mean, um, coffee break. I was basically saying that when the scientist is in the same room and talks about the impacts of climate change and what's going to happen, how some regions are going to get warmer and some regions are going to maybe suffer disproportionately, that conversation needs to happen with the, with the policymakers in the same room. Because when the policymakers understand the nuances between who's going to be more affected and when, you know, it would force them to take action. Today. We have new imperatives, one of which is to manage and use water sustainably and to take advantage of our numerous transboundary rivers as a gateway to stimulating trade and enterprise, thus growing our economies and creating blue and green jobs.